Hi, I'm Amy and I'm the librarian for the School of Education. This video will talk you through the process of finding scholarly articles on your topic through the library's website. Let's go to library.uncg.edu. From here we can access the research guide for ERM 604 by clicking on Research Guides by Subject, then Educational Research Methodology, and then ERM 604. This page provides access to lots of relevant resources. On the right side is my contact information and a chat box. If you'd like to make an appointment to meet with me, meet with me one on one to talk about your research, I'm happy to do that. If you're an online only student, please specify that after you've chosen a date and time and I'll send you my WebEx link. You can also email me for assistance. The chat box doesn't come to me directly, but it will connect you with someone in the library who can help you get started or provide basic research assistance. Up at the top of the page, there is a Finding Articles tab. Let's go there and see some databases for finding scholarly articles. The library provides access to hundreds of general and subject specific databases, so these are just a few. There's a link on the left side of the page to an article about how to read a scholarly article, so I encourage you to read that. We'll also talk a little bit more about that in a minute. For now, we're going to look at a database called Academic Search Complete. It's a broad general database that contains both news articles and scholarly journal articles in a variety of disciplines. If you're off campus, it will likely prompt you to log in when you click that link. It's the same username and password as email and Canvas. I'm going to do a search for smartphone addiction. If I scroll down, I can see articles about children, adolescents, college students, adults. You can see most of these are listed as academic journals, but I can limit so that I'm just looking at academic journal articles by clicking this box that says scholarly peer reviewed journals. I'm going to scroll down until I find one that I think looks interesting. Okay, I'm going to take a look at number 11 here. Mobile Ubiquity, Understanding the Relationship Between Cognitive Absorption, smartphone, smartphone Addiction, and Social Network Services. If I click on the title, I'm taken to a page that has a lot more information about this article. It has the journal in which it's published, the date of publication, um, a list of subject terms. We'll, we'll revisit these in just a moment. And then an abstract. So the abstract is the description of what the article is about. This is a very helpful a tool to help you figure out if this article is relevant to your research or if this is something that's interesting to you. I can also use it to look for more keywords that might be relevant in future searches. Um, so I can see here, um, here's a, relative, a related term of social network services addiction. So that's sort of a tangentially related topic, um, social network addiction, but that's something that I might be interested in looking for later. If I want to read this article, uh, many times over here on the left side, there will be a link that says PDF full text. In this case, there's a link that says check for full text. If I click on that, it's going to take me into the library catalog and find that article in a different database. So here's the link that says view full text. And I can come here and then I can download the PDF of the article. As you can see up at the top here is the abstract again. And if I scroll down a little further, I can see the introduction. So the introduction is going to give us, of course, basic introductory information and tell us the state of this topic right now. So this part is the literature review which is where the authors discuss other articles on this topic up to this point. In this case, they're looking at several different aspects, including technology addiction and problematic smartphone usage, cognitive absorption. So they're taking their topic, breaking it down into smaller pieces, and then explaining what the literature has said to this point on those topics. 
we scroll down a little bit further, you can see how they arrived at their hypothesis, which of course is how what they think the outcome of the research will be. And then they get to the research methodology. Um, I usually like to look at the research methodology first, just to see how they are going about their research and to see you know, if this is a research methodology that I may be interested in using myself, um, but I like to start here. And then I read the hypothesis, typically, if there is one in an article, and then I look at the results. So the results are going to tell you, of course, what they actually found. And then the findings and discussion is where they actually talk about what the implications are for their findings and if there is room for future research. At that point is usually when I go back and read the literature review after I've gotten a good grounding in their research on this topic. And then, of course, at the end, after the conclusions, is often some survey items, as you can see, that could be helpful. And then a list of references. Of course, these references can lead you to other sources that are similar. These are the ones that they actually cited in their literature review. So you can glance through these and see if there are other sources that you might want to use. So if I decide that I want to use this article, I can click the Save PDF link and I will save it for later. I'm going to go back momentarily to Academic Search Complete, where I started. And now I'm going to do another search for social network addiction. And now I see some of the same articles, but some different articles as well. So, um, you know, if I decide that this is the way I want to pursue my research, then I may decide to go in this direction as well. I can also, you know, narrow down this topic a little bit. If I find that this is, you know, too many resources to look at, I can try adding a second keyword to try to narrow it down a little bit. Let's say that I'm interested in social network addiction in women specifically. So I'm going to add, so I'm going to add and women to my search to see if that helps. Wow, that got me down to eight, which is maybe too many. So maybe I need to, to back up a little bit and um, think about another way to narrow down my topic. Maybe I'll try college students. So this is a process that we go through when we are doing research. Um, you know, you don't, you rarely start out with the topic that's exactly perfectly formed the way that you want it to be. The literature may lead you in a specific direction. So be open to that. But again, I'm, I'm narrowed to scholarly journal articles. I can also limit to a smaller date range if I need to, um, to get down to a list of resources that are going to be helpful to me. Now, one thing to keep in mind if you're collecting lots of resources is um, a way to collect and manage these resources. And of course, you can download them into files on your computer or upload them to Google Docs so that you can access them anywhere. But we do also provide assistance with an open source citation management tool called Zotero. So the folks in the library, including me, um, are Zotero users and can help you if you're interested in setting this up as a way to manage your citations. Uh, but what it allows you to do is collect citations and PDFs of articles in a place where you can sort them, organize them, and it also integrates with both Word and Google Docs if you're interested in using it. So if you have questions about using Zotero, please feel free to contact me and I can help you figure out how to get started. So again, my contact information is on the right side of the main research guide. So I hope that you will reach out to me if you have questions. Thank you for listening.